All right, we're gonna go eat dinner from this. That way, no dishes, right? Yeah, no. Really? I'm gonna cook from this book for my family for an entire week. Stick around to see what we think of it. You like it? Mm -hmm. Really? That's a shocker. It's good. How bad could it be? Is it bad? Yes. More for me. I'm putting more on. That's really good. I love it. Little blend. Oh, it smells like heaven in my mouth. Hey everyone, if you're new to the channel, welcome to Plant Based with Jeremy. Here we focus on plant based and vegan goodness. In addition to videos like this, where I review cookbooks with my family and let people know what we think on no certain terms. I also have a lot of videos with my own recipes, visits to businesses that do plant based options, as well as informational videos. But today, we're gonna cook for an entire week using Dr. Gregor's How Not to Diet cookbook. Now, when I say it's Dr. Gregor's book, I should say that it's actually, the recipes are by Robin Robertson. Let's give Robin the shout out that she deserves. If you're not familiar with Dr. Michael Gregor, he's kind of the forerunner along with people like Joel Furman of the Nutritarian Movement. Unless I'm wrong about that, Furman definitely is. Anyway, this is one of those books that I used when I was on my massive weight loss journey. So I've previewed this already, but there's still a lot of things in here that I haven't tried. So I'm looking forward to doing that with my family. If you have got a cookbook you'd like me to review for the channel, let me know in the comments below. That's where I get a lot of the suggestions and how I come up with the cookbooks I do. A lot of people did ask for this as well, but I already wanted to do it because it's in my cupboard. If at any point in time you enjoy this video, hit that thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for more content like this. Now to the food. For dinner tonight, we're making these vegetable I'm gonna say this wrong. How do you say this word? Chirashi bowls? Chirashi. I don't know. I guess so. It's like a Japanese flavor. Hmm. Don't mind us. We just got back from the tie dye convention. I'll let you fill in the blank and wonder why we're actually both wearing tie dye. Oh, I'm not gonna explain it. Tell us your own story in the comments below on why we're both wearing similar tie dye shirts. I look forward to the stories. So, this is like a Japanese inspired kind of dish, which my kids will like and my wife will not. Mm -hmm. But I think it's like Japanese flavors that she'll be okay with. The only thing I'm gonna change here is I'm gonna add tofu. Because we're having it for dinner and it seems like it will not be super filling otherwise. So for this vegetable shirashi dish, it seems simple enough. You make quinoa and then you uh, like saute your vegetables in water with some miso. And then you top it with some stuff like green peas and bean sprouts, put nori on top, simple enough. Uh, you have to make a umami sauce. So that'd be fun to make. Something different. That's the, like, the most complicated part of this recipe. Otherwise, this looks like it'll come together really fast. I'm supposed to put rice vinegar in with the quinoa to make it kind of like a sticky rice. But I don't have any rice vinegar. We ran out and I didn't realize it. So the closest thing you can swap with is apple cider vinegar. Very nice. You like it? Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. That's a shocker. She was the one I wasn't sure about. I dig it. Chew with your mouth closed. I got in trouble. Someone in the comments said that we chew with our mouths open and it's gross. So we're gonna do better about that. See, we listen to the comments. That's why you should write comments. It's really good. It's simple, it's light. That sauce didn't take that long to make, actually. This is the kind of dinner that can come together in probably 20 minutes, if you're diligent, maybe yeah. a little bit longer. But it didn't, so I was making two things at once. Listen to this. Attitude. How is it? How is it? <laughs> We're really conscious now of chewing with our mouths open. <laughs> I 
I liked it. Good flavor. The seaweed gives it a nice flavor. Had everything, you mommy. For dessert, we're making these berries with balsamic chocolate glaze. This is a really simple recipe. It's just like a lot of berries and then throw some chocolate balsamic on it. Now, when I picked this recipe, I didn't realize that chocolate balsamic sauce is the thing you could buy. So I figured there was like a recipe to make it in here and there's not. So I'm gonna try to make my own by making a balsamic reduction and then adding some chocolate chips to it. How bad could it be? Uh-oh. That started to burn. All right, it's not burnt, but it's thick. All right, now we're gonna add chocolate chips to it and see what happens. That's, I'm gonna say this is a tablespoon. And the residual heat from this will melt it. Let's see what happens. This is looking a little too pasty. Throw a little more in there, will you? Just like a couple. I wish I was too pasty. Well, I'm gonna need to add some. Yeah, that's good, that's good, that's enough, that's enough. So I think I, I, I've screwed this up pretty badly. But I can't add water to it now because it's got chocolate in it, right? Yeah, can you pour a little balsamic in here? That's good, that's good, that's good. That's a lot. Okay, I think that helps. Ow. Is it bad? Yes. So bitter. It's not dessert. Just bitterness. It's really good. You're crazy. On top of berries, that's gonna be great. I'll just Wait. have some chocolate chips. No, no, no. You don't know. Wait. Oh, it's I gonna know. be so good. No, it's really not. You got. You know what? You got a part that I got a better part than you did. I think. I mean, a better part. You'll see. You You'll also see. like coffee, and I do not. No, no, no. It's gonna be great. Mix with yeah. the berries. Just wait. Let's see if I can change your mind. Give it a shot. It looks um weird. Ow! Oh! Ah! You like it? Yep. Ibram, come try this. Apparently, everyone else hates it so far. I don't know where Ibram went. He disappeared. See, I really like that. I think you're all crazy. More for me. I'm putting more on. I'm just gonna drink it. Watch this. Oh, I'm, gonna, oh. I'm gonna use this as chocolate syrup from now on. This is delicious. I'm just gonna drink it by the spoon. No, I'm not. Only but try it if you... I actually, I'm, I'm literally putting more on because it's that good. Only try it if you like the taste of bitter chocolate and sour stuff. It's, it's a little bit bitter. Together. It's a bit bitter. I put way too much on by now. To prove a point, I put too much. All right, boy, come here and try this. Excuse me. Yeah. No? He went back for more. There's something better, right? Dad, move, I need to get No? Some. You don't like it? So this was just me. So uh, not a winner for kids, obviously, but if adults like yeah. bitter stuff, Maybe okay for you. I uh, committed, I put a lot on. You committed fruit genocide. You, fruit genocide? Fruit genocide, right here. Have a bite of that. No. Who wants real chocolate juice? Woo! Woo! Annie to the rescue. Okay, where's my, that's my bowl. You guys are jerks. Office. I'm gonna take mine out of the room and play my new board game. By yourself? By myself, there's a one player mode. No, you have For dinner, we're making pasta with creamy pumpkin sauce. What are you doing? You said to cook lentils. Lentils aren't in the recipe. What are we doing? Well, there's no, I know there's protein in everything, but there's no like isolated protein source in this. So I'm gonna add lentils. And also there's not really a vegetable. So we're gonna add some broccoli too. Just to zhuzh it up a little bit, but the flavors are all what's in this book. So you can, 
you can walk away with that in mind. Get on it. Wait. Can I make the sauce in seven minutes or less? No, because I have to cook the onion for five to seven minutes. Uh, I'm on it though. Watch me go. Woo! All right, here we go. All right, this is actually a fairly simple recipe. Mix all the sauce ingredients together, right? It's pretty quick. And uh, I think we made something like this in the past and the kids liked it, so it should be okay. Let's see. So that sauce needs to cook for about five to 10 minutes. While that's happening, it suggested a Brazilian cashew nut parm. So I'm gonna try making that. I feel like this happened last time I tried to make this Parmesan. I did it in a magic bullet and it doesn't like it. So now I'm gonna switch over to a food processor. Hopefully that works better. More dishes, sorry Willie. No. Sorry. No, get back out! Please, I'll make the kids do it. Pumpkin pasta! I made something like it before and you liked it. I wanted tacos. And how was I supposed to know that? Last chance to change the sauce. Will you want to try it? I do remember liking this one. That's really good. Ding, ding, ding. Okay, now we just mix it all together. Want to try this parmesan? Uh, my hands are oh. wet. Let me feed you like a bird. Break it up. Break it up, children. It's good. How's the cheese? cheese is very nutty. It's very nutty? Well, it's made from nuts. Yeah, well, I mean, if it's in cheese terms, no. But like... Is it good for flavor? It tastes good, but it doesn't taste like cheese. Want to try this sauce? <clears throat> I did. It got it on my arm. It tastes pretty good. Yeah? It tastes more like tomato sauce than it tastes like pumpkin. Yeah, it's a, I think it's a really good sauce. And what's nice about adding the pumpkin is it adds extra nutrients it's to it. It tastes like, like a rose soup. Has more fiber. Is it tastes like, like tomato soup. Is this supposed to be like a rose? Maybe. Mom, if you want cheese, you gotta create your own. How's your dinner, mommy? It's a bit like acidic. Like I think it could be more. I don't know. It's like really acidic. Because of the tomatoes? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe do more of a pumpkin. Pumpkin than less tomato. Look at that cow yeah, cheese pulse. Boom. I really like this, but the pumpkin adds this extra fullness to it, like an earthiness to it that I really, really like. This is a banger of a sauce if you want to have something other than tomato sauce, but still have a bit of a tomato sauce vibe. It's really good sauce. You can make like a, this would be good in a casserole too. And Annie likes it because she doused hers in cheese. I don't know, I like the sauce. You like the sauce? Sauce is Make it, let me know what you think in the comments below. We forgot to put the lentils in. Still good. Still good. Well, the lentils just add some more protein. I mean, the recipe doesn't call for it anyway, so there you go. Damn it! So I know what I'm gonna use those lentils for that I cooked. I'm gonna make Dr. Gregor's Brol. That stands for barley, rye, oats, and lentils. It's a mixture he uses that you can use for breakfast, actually, as a replacement for things like oatmeal. Or you can use it as like a base for a grain bowl as well. So what I'm gonna do is make this tonight and tomorrow morning, I'm gonna make breakfast with it. I'm gonna make, he has like a recipe in here for like a black forest chocolatey kind of thing. And what's great about this is it makes a huge batch of it and then you can separate it into like half a cup or cup sizes that you can then uh, freeze. And then what I do is the night before I'm gonna have it for breakfast or a meal, I'll just take out that little chunk that I've frozen and use it. I don't need to do that tonight because the, the one I'm gonna cook and keep, I'm gonna eat in the morning.
So my little bro mixture has been sitting in the fridge. I'm gonna warm it up for like 30 seconds in the microwave and then add all the other things that need to be added. This is like a really easy thing you just swap out for oatmeal. So you can kind of mix whatever you want. I'm likely to add a few more things that are in the recipe. So if you see things on the screen that you don't see on the list, that's why. I'm adding like bananas, maybe some dried fruit as well. Some hemp seeds on top. So as you can hear in the background, Rufus is having his breakfast, so I'm gonna have mine. So I'm gonna try to just get a bite of a little bit of everything, but not include the stuff I added. It's really nice. It's very chewy. So if you don't like texture, it might not be for you. And you can add a little bit more sweetener, like molasses or date syrup, maple syrup, if you need, uh, to your liking. But this makes it super chocolatey and delicious. Like I said, you can add to the fruit. I really, really, really like it. It does have like a slightly bitter taste to it, but if you're accustomed to that, then you're probably fine. I like this a lot. If my wife could eat it, she'd like it too. It's the brawl, Willie. The brawl in the bowl. It's the brawl in the bowl. Oh, I like that, brawl in the bowl. The bowl brawl. She can't eat it, because she's gluten-free and it's got barley and rye. But if you don't have a gluten sensitivity, have at her. For dinner tonight, we're gonna make bell peppers stuffed with black beans and mushroom walnut crumbles. So one thing I'm noticing in this book a lot is that inside of the recipes, there's also other little recipes you have to make to go along with it. So in last night's, it had the uh, crumbles, I know the crumbles, but the uh, like the, the nutritional yeasty parmesan -y kind of thing. That's the technical term I'm looking for. And tonight it's these uh, mushroom walnut crumbles. So it's another recipe inside the book. All that to say, you just really wanna read these recipes all the way through to make sure that you don't suddenly get hit with something that's a lot more time consuming. Not that this is, but it just adds another extra layer of thing you have to do. Read through the instructions on this book is all I'm saying. So I underestimated how long this dish takes to make because you gotta cook the crumbles too. Here's the good thing though. I don't need all the crumbles for this dish so I could use this for something else down the line. Apparently they freeze well. So that's a good thing, uh, even though it's a lot of upfront work. But it's getting there. This is just maybe not the kind of thing you want to make on a weeknight when you don't have a lot of time, like I did tonight. It's getting there though, eh, Willie? Dinner will be ready in three hours. I'll no, like half hour or so. I'll be in bed. I'll wake you up. It'll be delicious. I'll wake you up to the smell of stuffed peppers. Will you like that? No, not in the middle of the night. Mm. And chocolate cake? Mm. Yeah, they're good. Yeah, use those like a ground beef kind of thing. So first off, what we have to do is we have to slice up some peppers, just cut off the tops and get the insides out because we need to steam them first. The reason you do that when you're stuffing a pepper is so that they loosen up a bit and you can fit more stuffing inside. First time I made stuffed peppers, I screwed up big time. I didn't do this and I didn't really find I could fit much stuffing in. This makes them soft and pliable. So you wanna do that. And then we're gonna make that mixture, add up a bunch of stuff, including the walnut crumbles. And then uh, that's that. The good thing is, is that Parmesan I made last night, we can sprinkle on top. So it's nice that that's useful for other recipes I'm making this week. Tasty. 
It's, um, yeah, it's got a lot of nice flavors. The tomato sauce on top is kind of nice. And I don't really like tomatoes, so that's saying something. Yeah, it's good. I would eat this again. Is it meaty, but in a good way? The no. walnut crumbles and stuff? No, I wouldn't say it's meaty. Boy? Club, tasty. Flavors, flavorful. That's it. More tomato sauce. I want more tomato sauce than that. I'm gonna put some more on top. Bring the bowl Let's bring it over, bring the bowl over. Uh, that would be a cool one. I like this. It, uh, I definitely agree with the boy. A little extra tomato sauce on top would be nice. It's not dry, it's just, I don't know, could just use a little, a little something, but. A more flavor. A little more flavor, yeah. The tomato yeah. sauce would help. I like this though. But for like a, a really, really healthy nutritarian dinner. What the fuck is a nutritarian? A nutritarian is like whole food plant based. Why would you say whole food plant based? Because the guy who wrote this book is a nutritarian. Anyway. Isn't that whole food plant based? No, it's slightly different. So this is good. Stuffed peppers are yummy. I'm gonna make crust free pumpkin pie. The curious thing about this is it asks you to choke, choke. Don't choke on chia seeds. I mean, you could because they're thick. It just says to soak three tablespoons of chia seeds with three tablespoons of water. It usually has a three to one ratio, making it pretty thick. Really, it's just blending all this stuff together in a blender. I mean, that's pretty good. Probably ground up. My wife's going through my old toys because she's selling them. I'm just giving them away, actually. Honestly. What? Bye! Does anyone know who this guy is? Look it up. I think he's a knockoff of something. I don't know. Anyway, let's try my pumpkins. Uh, Hi. No, he's Mattel. Ooh, try that. Don't put that back in the blender. I licked it. No. People will be disgusted. We're going to bake it now. His name is T-Wolf. Hi, T-Wolf. You're going into the happy home of other kids. Some little kid would be very happy to have tea wolf. This is the part I hate the most is because it's like impossible to get it all out of the blender. And then baking it. Let's see how this turns out. It's crustless pumpkin pie. And? It's like pumpkin pie. Do you like pumpkin pie? Thanks. Great talk. Boy? I don't want this fork. Do you need a fork? I'm sorry. That's a weird way to say please. Please. Where's the crust? It's called a crustless pumpkin pie. Not stupid. Well. Do you miss the crust? Yeah. But how is it otherwise? It tastes like pumpkin pie because it's really pretty easy to make pumpkin pie. But this is without any sugar. Dates. Yeah, it's a healthier pumpkin pie. So, so you're Still, saying it's just as good as regular pumpkin pie? A little bit worse. <laughs> and also you don't have ice cream and there's no crust, so it's worst. I hate crust. I love it. So this is your ideal pumpkin pie? Mm-hmm. Tastes a bit like gingerbread. Tastes like molasses. I'm a big lover of pumpkin pie, so this is my jam. This is really, really good. And even's crazy. I don't miss the crust. I'm a filling person. This is so good. I would eat this a lot. This is an A plus 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 for me. I'm gonna make a cheesy broccoli soup. It's just my son and I tonight, and we're gonna go to a movie, so I wanted to make something quick. And I also have a delicious, fresh loaf of sourdough. Oh, it smells like heaven in my mouth. 
If you want to see how to make sourdough from scratch really, really easily, I have a link below for another video on the on the channel. Okay, this seems pretty simple. Uh, what's gonna make this kind of filling and hearty is some cashews and some beans. But it all basically cooks really quickly and then blends together, and that's that. So let's get to it. I made something like this before, so I'm, I'm thinking, am I gonna like it? Little blend. Yeah. Some salt and pepper, maybe? Get some salt. Uh, so it maybe is a little bland because this cookbook doesn't use salt. Um, it's SOS free. Well, that's just, it's because it's healthy. People have a lot of salt in their diet in, in certain parts of the world. <laughs> We're not gonna name. Right, I'm gonna try without salt first. Yeah, it's good. A little bland. I'm gonna add more nutritional yeast. More salt? Oh my god, that's a lot of salt. That's really salty. <laughs> There's like a happy medium between enough and not enough, too much and not enough, and I think I want a bit too high. Yeah. We're eating quickly because we're going to see the new Mission Impossible movie. Do, 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 do. Copyright! Copyright! Don't sing it! This is better. And then you can just add more nutritional yeast to make it as cheesy as you want to. But oh, I like this. The only thing I will say about the cooking instructions it made it seem like the broccoli would cook really, really quick. It didn't cook as quick as it said it would. Now, this is a nice, simple soup because we're going to get movie popcorn later. <laughs> this kale and sweet potato hash. So I've made a fair amount of hashes, but it's also the kind of thing I like to do in a cookbook because it shows me the difference between different cookers. That didn't make sense. I was gonna say authors. Recipe makers. For the sweet potato, I'm supposed to bake it in the oven, but I'm actually just gonna do it in the air fryer because it's simpler. I'm gonna make this one pretty much as is. The only thing I'm not gonna do is make the umami sauce redux because it makes like two cups of it and all I need is two tablespoons. So I just kind of half-assedly made my own umami sauce or what I think will taste like an umami sauce. What did I put in this? I put in like a half a teaspoon of garlic powder, but a quarter teaspoon of ginger, teaspoon of vinegar, apple cider vinegar that is, teaspoon of crushed tomatoes, but a teaspoon of maple syrup and probably a tablespoon of tamari sauce and then a splash of vegetable broth at the end. All right, let's see how it tastes. Killed it, nailed it. Boom. Quick umami sauce. Oh, damn. I'm really proud of myself. No, I think my wife used all my kale the other day. Damn it, Willie. You know what I do have though? I have cabbage. I'm gonna call an audible and throw some cabbage into this bad boy. One thing I forgot to mention is I'm gonna add beans. Just give it a little extra protein. Mm. I'm putting in kidney beans, but you can use any beans. Black beans would be delicious as well. It's good. Yeah? Yeah. I added a little salt to it. This is the cup with this new salt. Oh yeah. And some hot sauce. Let me see. I, I like. You like? Yeah. 
Oh yeah. All right, we're gonna go eat dinner from this. That way, no dishes, right? Yeah, no. Really? Yeah. I really like the meal. It's really, really tasty. It's simple, it's hearty. It's comfort food goodness. It's up there with other hashes I've made. The cabbage was good instead of the kale because I didn't have it, but uh, we like it. For dessert tonight, I'm gonna make this black forest. Black forest? Oh yeah, it is black forest chia pudding. This is my son and I, and this serves too, so it's perfect. It's basically like any chia pudding. You blend a bunch of stuff together, add the chia seeds. When I make chia pudding, I like to blend the chia into the mixture because it makes it smoother, but for the purposes of this video, I'm gonna do it the way that the book says. I might have added a few more cherries than the recipe calls for, because that's the way I roll. It says it takes eight hours to overnight to refrigerate. It seems like a long time. I bet you could do this in a lot less. It doesn't take that long for sheet to plump up. Anyway, let's uh, let's give it a roll. So you notice the chia pudding basically had the chia all set on top and there's a bit liquidy underneath. So about half hour before serving and I decided to give it a stir. And then I'm gonna top it with cherries and I don't know, maybe some granola. It's black forest chia pudding. How is it? Is it good? How's the texture? Cause it was all sitting on the top, the chia. So I mixed it in again a little while ago. I think it's pretty good. It's not bad? I was a little worried about the texture. Yeah. All right, and you give it a rip. Oh. That's good. Mmm. I mean, the combination of chocolate and cherry is always a winner for me. In truth, I think all I would do is take my usual chia recipe, which I'll put a link to down below, and add some cherries to it. Hey, eh? My chocolate chia pudding recipe. But this yeah. is pretty good. Not bad. Get off your phone, boy. Get off your phone. Ooh, touche. But then I have to stop talking to the people. Thanks for joining us for the How Not To Diet cookbook. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up and let us know in the comments below what you enjoyed about it. Also, where are you watching this from? And if you're on a weight loss or plant-based journey, where are you at? Obviously, you should subscribe if you want more content like this. And YouTube really wants you to watch this video next because it's super awesome, put a lot of work into it, and I, I just think you're gonna like it. You know what I'm saying?